Okay, let's talk about conducting a level one energy audit. This is a very basic energy audit. Many would call this a walk-through energy audit. And again, we may move away from that term audit. You may choose the word survey or assessment or opportunity review, however you want to do it. Report card, there's another option. But essentially, um, let's just talk about what you're going to do once you get on site. The first thing you want to do is spend some time with the managers, uh, the plant manager, facility manager, the key buyers, if you will, and understand their needs. It's very important that you understand their why. Why do they want to do an energy audit? If they're not that serious about it, it's a good time to ask yourself whether you should be doing this audit or not. Uh, if they're not very serious about it, they're probably not going to be very serious about implementing anything from your audit. Building on that, you want to understand where they think the opportunities exist. They'll have ideas on where they want to make improvements and where they've allocated funding, and understanding this would be very, very good. Once you get their list of where they think the savings are, you want to compare that against the maintenance and operators folks. And often the maintenance people know exactly where the energy savings are. Plus, many projects and maintenance have very, very quick paybacks. So these are some things you want to do before you even walk on the facility is just try to have a sit down and a talk, maybe even a workshop to try to understand ideas before you start looking through the facility. Okay, the next thing you want to do is actually tour the facility you will find opportunities. Just walking around, you'll see things that they don't think about or they don't see because you're the energy expert. Let's say we would spend two hours understanding, like in a boardroom somewhere, some of the manager's needs. And, and if we could talk to the operators, that's great. But on the floor, we would easily spend another two hours you know, walking around. And I'm saying this is for about a 100,000 square foot facility. You'd, you'd ramp this up appropriately if it was a larger facility. But basically walking around, maybe talking to operators would be in some of this on-site tour where you'd be getting some real information about how they run the facility. Now, whenever you do these kinds of things, it's extremely important that you ask questions and in a very polite manner, in a very non-threatening way because one thing you don't want to do and this is very very important probably the hardest thing to do on this whole exercise is to avoid putting the in-house staff on the defensive just think about this you're doing an audit of basically their work anything you find as an opportunity makes them somewhat look bad so you want to position this approach as an opportunity you know assessment or a way to help them get some things done maybe because you're a third party uh, that you you know can help the management actually approve and get these things funded so there's a lot of different ways to go there but you don't want to make it sound like they're doing a terrible job that won't get you anywhere in fact if you do that most of the time the in-house staff will sabotage your projects so be very keen to this asking questions politely and just really trying to understand the situation without making many judgments and that is hard to do Finally, at the end of the audit, and there's a lot more to doing an audit, what you want to do is develop a one-page list of the opportunities and simple paybacks. And that can be return, you know, return on investment. We had that discussion before in a previous session. Whichever one the customer likes better is the way you want to present that. You might also present you know, rough environmental savings, but this is very preliminary. This is why it's a one-page list. And you're just saying what the paybacks are. For example, hey, we see this lighting project. This is about a three-year payback. Or, hey, we see this heat pump project. It's about a five-year simple payback. You don't want to get too far into the details at this point. What you want to do is determine which of these projects are good. And so that is the main objective of this first level one audit is somewhat of a, a filter to filter through and find the best opportunities. If you want to call this qualifying, that would be fair. And really get it down to a short list of high probability projects. So those are some key principles about conducting a level one energy audit or energy assessment. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll catch you in the next section.